Hey, friends and fam, it's John, and it's time for the JMart Cast for Monday, December 12th. What's going on? How are you? Hope you didn't get sick like I did earlier this week. Um, I think some of the partying last weekend possibly might have uh, weakened my immune system, and pretty much the day after uh, the um, the Christmas party that I went to last weekend, I felt that I was sick, and yeah, been a whole week of fighting the illness, but I think I'm pretty much back to normal now. Uh, other than that, though, it's been pretty good. I got to go to a spa with the old wifey with the ball and chains there. Just kidding. She's all right. We had a good time. We went to this place called Thermia, I believe. It's in Whitby, about a 40-minute drive from where I live. And this is kind of funny. I actually got a gift certificate to go to the spa from my brother two years ago <laughs> for Christmas. So he got me the gift certificate for this place. And then when I went to use it, I realized that they hadn't actually opened yet. And I guess they were just accepting money <laughs> from people who bought certificates and such, but they weren't going to be open for another two whole years. Basically this year, October was when they finally opened <laughs> and then I didn't even hear about this but two people told me told me and my wife this after we told them we'd just been there about how when they first just opened there was a staff outbreak and so they had to close shop and <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I don't know figure out why that was happening <laughs> and and fix it and take care of it but anyways uh, we didn't know that going into it but it was a good time I had fun the wife and I got to do some steam, some uh, dry sauna. We got in to go in the hot pools and the cold pools. We did the cold plunge, the 10 degree Celsius. I think it said 40 degree Fahrenheit um, water. Uh, that was freaking cold. But And at the one that I got into, it actually had a um, waterfall that you could go under for the cold 10 degree water to go on your head but I was like once I got in and felt how cold cold it felt in the body I was like there's no way I'm getting my hair wet with this <laughs> this is not not for me <laughs> but it was it was awesome we also had a massage included which was nice too uh, had a brief chat with my massage therapist and he seemed like a nice guy he uh, told me that he got into therapy after having had nearly a decade of experience in a couple of other fields in writing and photography. And so when he actually told me he got a into a car accident and used massage therapy as part of his rehabilitation program and really saw the benefit of it, decided to pursue a career in it. So he was pretty good. But then later on, when I talked to my wife, the person she got was actually a lot uh, harder, uh, in terms of like the pressure that she applied, uh, for the massage. And I was like, damn, I wish I got that person. Cause I specifically asked for a male masseuse and, or massage therapist, whatever, and got her the female one. Cause that's the, what they offered. And I said, I'll, I'll take the male. Cause I was hoping to, to get the person who would apply more pressure, but I guess I got screwed. <laughs> I was like, my guy was still good, so no, no, just you know, joking around. But anyway, um, uh, what I want to comment on? Oh yeah, Liver King. I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of Liver King or what he's been going through recently. But if you don't know who he is, he's this internet personality that promotes people eat liver. And he's really jacked, like as a personality, he's just got huge muscles on every part of his body and he's going around shirtless everywhere so he can really show off his muscles. And everyone, of course, suspected that he was doing uh, like uh, performance enhancing drugs, whether it be testosterone or whatever, human growth hormone, uh, but it doesn't matter what it is. He's taking something to look that way. Uh, of course, you still got to put all up, put in a lot of work to, you know, build a muscle. It doesn't just happen without trying but um you know he's definitely using uh, uh, some assistance it's not just liver making him look that good <laughs> but um you know whenever people challenged him on this he he always uh, denied it like point blank in their face saying that no he, he does not use uh performance enhancing drugs and it's like all right 
is this a lie worth telling? Because like, if it's a lie, it's definitely going to come out. Like you're a huge personality online. Like people are going to ask questions. And if you're just denying it and you look the way you do, like if it's not worth lying because it's going to come out. (laughs) So when he like point blank was saying, no, uh, I'm not on, on drugs. I was like, okay, I still think most likely you're on drugs, but like, if we're going to play probabilities, I'll give 5% probability, 1% to 5%. 5% is being very generous. <laughs> it's like maybe 2% that you're actually not on something. But anyway, so it did, of course, come out that he is, in fact, on for hormone enhancing drugs. Some data leaked. So now he's come out apologizing. He's, you know going out there being like, oh, I'm going to go natural, blah, 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 going to look out for my health and all that. And I mean, it's great that he's, I guess, embracing being, telling the truth now, but I mean, obviously he should have just told the truth from the start, but of course he's trying to sell some supplements and such. So, you know, and he's trying to make it seem like he looks the way he does through the supplements that he's selling. So, uh, you know, (laughs) you have to do a little bit of marketing, I guess, to, uh, you know, move product. (laughs) Let's just put it that way. My thing is, whenever the subject of liver can came up, I would try to like steer the conversation towards saying that it's possible to look really muscular later in life as we age. Not as muscular as he is because like he just looks insane. If you don't know what he looks like, go go Google him real quick. You'll see like it's obviously (laughs) he's on something. But I have pictures of like native tribesmen later in life. They have like big, wishy, bushy white beards and they look super jacked and they look, you know, not quite as jacked as liver king, but pretty close, like huge muscles on their arms and their chest and their pecs. Like it's amazing. And I expect that I too will have a decent looking physique much later in life. If I maintain the same level of of frequency and intensity and training that I have currently. Maybe not as much intensity, but, you know, with age, I'm sure the intensity will come down uh, somewhat. But if I start off with a high baseline, like, then that descent down is going to be very smooth. But anyway, I guess I wish maybe I should have just talked more shit about Liver King and made the point of saying that I definitely think is on steroids and he, he's not a good example. <laughs> But anyway, the truth is out there. Let's see what happens. Let's see if he actually goes natural. Uh, wonder what hell happened to his, you know, uh, online following and such. Probably just grow bigger. <laughs> but such is the world. Um, what else happened this week? Watched a bunch of uh, World Cup soccer. Morocco making it to the semifinals. That's pretty huge. First African nation to do so, to make it to the semis in the World Cup. Uh, and what I love is just like the, the geogra- some of the geographical history of Morocco uh, being the place where the Moors originate from, right? Historically, right? Morocco and the Moors. And then the Moors, of course, are the people that uh, made it to Europe and uh, uh, took some posts on the Iberian Peninsula. And of course, what is the Iberian Peninsula? It's that place on the map where you have Portugal and Spain side by side, right? And, of course, Morocco beat those two countries, Spain and Portugal, to make it to the semifinals. I'm pretty excited to see the semifinals. I love the World Cup. It's the best and biggest, like, global event. And every four years, I love tuning in and cheering for the underdogs. And definitely the Moroccans are the underdogs this uh, this year. And, but they've done really well to get to the uh, semifinals. Now, with France in the way to get to the final match we'll see french side's pretty good so it's gonna take another huge effort to get past them but anyway what have you guys been up to this week uh have you tried out this new chat gpt thing do you guys know what this is so it's like this artificial intelligence computer program and it's like this program that speaks back and forth with the user. So you can give it a prompt and it'll respond back. It could like write a poem for you, answer questions, do a bunch of stuff. 
It's kind of neat. Um, yeah, you just, let's see, what do you do? If you just search chat GPT, it's like the first link that comes up and then you can like sign up basically to use it, to have like a free version. And it's kind of interesting. So I've used it to summarize an article that I read earlier this week about Bitcoin. I'm going to read the summary in for the podcast. Uh, I have read the article as well to kind of make sure that the summary is right. <laughs> but it's interesting. Uh, so I did that and then I just wanted to run a couple of questions by it live on the podcast. So I'm going to go to the box and then write why why is stealing bad and then hit submit and then it pops up with a with an answer here it says uh, stealing is bad because it is a form of dishonesty it is wrong to take something that does not belong to you without permission and it can have serious consequences <laughs> it can also hurt the person who had their property stolen as they might now be without something they need or value Stealing also creates a sense of mistrust and insecurity in society as people may become more wa wary of others and less likely to trust them. <laughs> wow, ChatGPT, that's so nice of you to be so uh, understanding of why stealing is bad. <laughs> Let me try another one. Uh, what's the best way to train a dog? Submit. Bloop. And here's the answer. It says, the best way to train a dog is to use positive reinforcement. This means rewarding your dog with treats, praise, or playtime when they do something correctly. Positive reinforcement helps your dog learn faster and builds a strong bond between you and your pet. You should also be consistent in your training using the same commands and cues each time so that your dog can learn more quickly. Additionally, it is important to be patient and understand that training takes time and practice. Wow, such good advice. Thank you, ChatGPT. <laughs> oh, man. Should I do one more? Let's try... Give me five good Christmas gift ideas for my mom Let's see submit okay here we go number one a gift basket for of her favorite items in brackets wine chocolates bath products etc two a cozy blanket or throw three an art print or photo frame with a meaningful picture four a subscription to a magazine or service she loves. And number five, a set of personalized jewelry or accessories. Ding, 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 ding. Number five is the winner right here. It's for my mom. <laughs> okay, this thing's pretty good, man. I like it. It's like it's a good little tool. Check it out. Like the, I guess the hardest part is just thinking of like cool stuff to ask it and see what it spits out to you. Um, one thing I did, I actually, I, I got it to give me a write a poem about Bitcoin and central banks. I just did this right before starting the podcast. I put in the, the uh, prompt, write a poem about Bitcoin and central banks. And this is what it says. Central banks, so grand and powerful, no one can deny their might. But Bitcoin, a novel new currency, challenges their power day and night. A novel new currency. That's just the same word two times. Come on, chat GPT. You can do better than that. All right, there's two more stanzas. It's decentralized and digital, a currency that lives on the web. No government or bank can control it. A new way to transact is born instead. The central banks may not like it, but Bitcoin is here to stay. It's open to all who use it, and no one can take it away. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a child wrote this, but it's for better than I could do, I honestly. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Bitcoin, let's do a quick little Bitcoin update. We are on block height 767,019. Price of one Bitcoin is trading at 16,907 US dollars. One US dollar will 
buy you 5,915 sats or satoshis. Sats are short for satoshis. Satoshi is the name of the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, which is not his real name, just a pseudonym, as no one knows who the actual creator is. But one Bitcoin can be subdivided 100 million times, and each one of those units is called a sat or satoshi. If you live in Canada and you want to buy sats or Bitcoin, the exchange I recommend using is ShakePay, as they have a good user interface and low fees. There is a referral link in the description of this episode, and if you use it, you will get $10 reward for the first $100 of Bitcoin you purchase. So anyway, as I said earlier, I uh, read an article earlier this week called The Bullish Case for Bitcoin. This is an article on Medium, if you're familiar with that website. You can find a lot of good articles on Medium. This one's particularly good because it was also turned, it turned into a book later on. Uh, by the same title, The Bullish Case for Bitcoin. And so I had never actually read the free article, so I went back to read it, and it was good. And so I decided to use that chat GPT to kind of summarize um, sections of it. So here's what the summary looks like. I've got about a slightly more than two pages. Maybe I'll just go over the first page only to start out and then maybe I'll save the second page for next week. So there's a few sections. The first section is called Genesis. So of course, Genesis talking about the beginning, how it all started. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, a trustless system that allowed for the transfer of value between distant people without relying on a trusted intermediary. This revolutionary invention has profound impl implications for both economics and computer science, and Nakamoto should be considered for both a Nobel Prize in economics and the Turing Award. Bitcoin is a scarce digital good created through mining, with only 21 million Bitcoins ever to be mined. Its value is set game theoretically, basically on how much other participants will value it. And of course, as I've said in many other episodes, other people will eventually value it because it has the properties that make it a superior form of money. Remember that what is money? It is a store of value, a medium of exchange, and a unit of account. In order to be able to serve those functions, then it needs to be durable, portable, verifiable, divisible, and most importantly, scarce. Bitcoin has all those properties in spades above and beyond what the fiat system offers and much better than what gold used to. Anyway, coming back to the uh, summary from chat B GPT of that bullish case for Bitcoin article. The next section is the origins of money. Collectibles served as a form of proto money, allowing for trade and the transfer of wealth between generations. Over time, certain collectibles became widely accepted as stores of value, leading to a game-theoretic feedback loop that drove societies to converge on a single store of value. In the 19th century, gold became the world's single store of value, leading to an explosion in trade and wealth. An ideal store of value should be durable, portable, fungible, verifiable, divisible, scarce, have an established history, and be censorship resistant. These attributes allow a good to outcompete others and increase its demand over time. Yeah, so I, I think of all, of all those uh, characteristics, I did not mention fungible. Fungible just means that every unit is similar to every other unit. There's no difference between them, which is mostly true for Bitcoin. It's a little bit of a debatable one, actually, but... Not going to get into the details of that. And then the one that actually Bitcoin does not have like uh, the best is the established history, right? It's only been around since 2009. So 13 years, it's not a long period of time. It is censorship resistant more so than fiat currency and, uh, and gold as well. So, you know, we'll just got to give it some more time. And I'm confident as many as are many others that it will outcompete fiat currency and increase its demand over time and of course as demand for it grows over time and there is a scarce limited amount of it you do the math as to what happens okay 
Next section, the evolution of money. Money has always evolved in stages, with the store of value rule preceding the medium of exchange rule. Bitcoin is currently transitioning from the first stage of monetization to the second stage. It will likely be several years before Bitcoin transitions from being an incipient store of value to being a true medium of exchange. Okay, so that's the end of the first page. I don't think I'm going to want to get into the second page today. So with that said, thank you everybody for listening. Hope you liked today's episode with the chat GPT stuff. If you have any questions that you want me to ask chat GPT, send them my way. Anyways, uh, have a great rest of your week. Stay active. Be grateful. Jmart out.